<laughs> Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Gee, you can take this down a bit because I may well stop over and fall down. <laughs> hey, you old people living in heaven. You people, all of you, Canada, United States, Great Britain, you are all living in heaven. I'm a survivor of the Holocaust. What I've seen, although there's no human being should ever see this. Thank God for the Canadians, Americans, your veterans. Your veterans went and fought. Thousands of them never came back. They gave their life to save your country. Liberated me. I was liberated by the American forces. I came to Auschwitz. I was numbered. I was the 98,706th person. Millions of us died there. Can you picture 20, 30,000 a day, men, women, children dying in the gas chambers? I lost my parents. I lost five brothers, two sisters, and Auschwitz. Nine uncles, nine aunts, and tons of cousins. Auschwitz was approximately 150,000 men in Auschwitz. But 20,000 was Jewish people wore the Star of David. The rest, 25,000 Russians. The rest was Catholics, Protestants, all kinds of denominations. Six and a half million Jews they killed, five million gypsies, 20 million Christians died. Nobody talks about them. Remember, it's your generation. You are our next generation, your children. You should tell them what did happen. That's history. Make sure it doesn't happen to them or to their children or to their grandchildren. Usually I speak in schools, universities, churches all over Canada, United States. I speak for a couple hours. Here, I can only tell you, you're lucky, all of you here. I came to Newfoundland, 1946, right after the war. We used to drive here on the left side. St. John's was approximately 30, 35,000 population. There was not many roads. We, I, used to, I was a salesman, traveling on the road, selling all around the base buys. <laughs> <laughs> Yes, my ducky. <laughs> but I told you, if you don't understand my English, you'll have to speak Newfoundland Spice. <laughs> but you got to make the best of it. I came to Newfoundland. I found humanity. I still think about my parents they died so young, my sisters, my brothers, my friends, I went to school, 15 and 1600 students. None of them left alive. Why? The reason for over 40 years I never spoke about it, I wouldn't talk about it, till they talked me in to speak, to tell the generations to come. You should make sure it doesn't happen to you guys. Remember, evil is always around. 
Make you sure. Don't let yourself brainwash to anything. Think for yourself. You're living in the best country on the planet. Many nights I can't sleep, I sleep, I wake up, I think, I dream about it, I think about it, I see them all the time, I drive the car, I go on the road, I go to, into supermarkets, I see people, I say, I'm the only one for my family. It's very, very hard. You can never understand what they used to do, what they used to do could imagine. They used to take, people used to come with little babies in their hand, they grabbed the babies and threw it away like pieces of wood and piles of babies lying there in Auschwitz. And they used to scream. And I didn't see it because I came on a train seven days in a train. And a freight car could have picture, a freight car is only eight feet by 20. Between 80 and 100 people in a freight car with no food, with no water, with no washrooms, excuse my language, people used to pee in the pants. They used to scream and cry. Babies used to die. Men used to fall dead on, on my feet. You are living in heaven. And I want you to remember when comes November the 11th, at least you go to the war memorial and say a prayer for the fellows who went and fought and gave the life and saved you guys from evil. I was liberated in Tyrolean Mountains. I was in a camp, the last camp. We used to live in the ground. Could imagine eight feet deep. Karl Landsberg. Landsberg was 11 camps. Each camp had at least between 15 and 20,000. Just before almost ended, the Germans took all these camps, all the prisoners, we could hardly walk, and up to the mountains as shields. The tanks, the trucks, and the German army, and if truck breaks down, or tank with the tired on the prisoners, and we used to pull up to the mountains. And then midnight, they used to shoot down the mountains and the Americans shooting up to the mountain. We used to have one month with no food. Water, the only thing was, thank God they had icicles hanging from the trees. And that's what we used to eat. And I was liberated by the American forces. And when I was liberated, they, the Americans, what had really happened, midnight, they stopped shooting. We were lying on the ground there, and we half dead. And the first fellow who came close near us, I looked down the mountains, and you could see under each tree, under each rock, you see American soldiers crawling on the stomach towards us. The first American, when I saw coming over close to me, I was lying down, and I looked, I said, oh my God, it looks different than the Nazis. And he says to me, you're free, you're free. I don't know, I don't understand English. I can't speak, I don't know what I mean. He's yelling to me, but he saw me wearing the Star of David. And he said, are you Jewish? I don't know what he said. So he started to speak to me in Jewish, in Yiddish. And he says to me, I am, Amer I am American from Chicago, I am Jewish. I can't stay with you because I have to go and get them fellows. Could imagine he had a box in the back and he had like a phone. I didn't know what he's talking on the phone. Now I know it's a phone, but at that time I didn't know what he had there. And an hour later, American trucks, nurses, doctors came and picked us all up. Thousands of us who survived. I would, they weighed me, I weighed 75 pounds. They told me I weighed 75 pounds. And we were starving to death. Now I go in the restaurant and say, you want this? You want this? Eat all this? I said, where were you when I was starving? <laughs> <laughs> oh, you lucky guys here. 
But I want you to remember, you should make it sure it doesn't happen to you guys or your children or grandchildren. Stand up against evil. And don't you ever give away your values, your laws and order. Canada, God bless Canada. And God bless the world. But make it sure it's better to love than hate. Don't you ever hate anybody. By love you conquer the world. By hate you'll only destroy the world and you destroy yourself. I'd like to have time to tell you what did happen. I published a book. Anybody who wants to buy it, they can buy the book. <laughs> and then the store selling it. I had a, a letter from two judges, one from Moncton and one from uh, somewhere else. And he said to me, he wrote me, he said he, cry, he cried when he read the book. He said, every Canadian citizen should read the book. He said they cherish more Newfoundlanders than before. But they make it sure it doesn't happen. I'm, my, my, I'm the last generation for my time. It's you guys. You're going to take over the world. Your children. You make it sure they live in a good world and a better life. Make it sure don't teach them to hate. You better to love, believe me. Better to love than hate anytime. Even if you don't like him, don't hurt him. Even if you don't like him, you don't have to invite him to your house for dinner. <laughs> but make it sure. What can I say? There's so much to talk about it. For me to stay for a couple of hours, I'll tell you. But I'm only here for 15, 20 minutes. What can you say? A long goodbye. <laughs> how I got to Auschwitz, how they drove us out from the city. We walked, and the shoot, random shooting, first time I ever seen, I was only 15 years old, when we went to the ghettos. When I went to Auschwitz, I was 16 and a half. Could imagine? God bless you. You should only make sure it doesn't happen to you guys. Thank you. <laughs>